if I were to be honest, which I mean, let's be real, I always am. At this point, I do not remember the majority of what is in this stag. So as you can see, I have quite a lot to show to you guys today. I have nine boxes in total, but but two of them are not mine. Two of them are things that I ordered for a friend and I'm gonna open them and show them to you guys because I actually wanna see what the customization is like, the fairy loot editions, but I will not be keeping them. I'm just having a nosy before I pass them along to my friend. But yeah, we have um, quite a few things. We have some special editions that I've ordered, like things that I've pre-ordered that have come in, anticipated releases, sequels, stuff like that, as well as my regular monthly subscription boxes from March. So I do have a can, I've cracked a can of vanilla Coke to power this unboxing, but before we start diving in and finding out what lovely books I have this month, I have a few new and limited edition products to show you guys from the sponsor of today's video which is wild so y'all know about wild now if you are on this channel with any kind of frequency i am a big fan of wild they make products like body products that are good for the environment and good for your body they're powered by plants they use natural ingredients they're most well known for their deodorants which is what i typically use the most of but they have branched out recently into new products including shower gel with no plastic waste they have lip balms shampoo bars, travel deodorants, and all sorts of good stuff. And their main ethos, their main aim is to try and reduce bathroom waste because we throw away so much. We are not recycling the packaging and Wild is aiming to change that. So for their deodorants, like I said, they have absolutely no plastic waste and that is within the packaging as well as the product itself. They have refillable cases, which are also customizable. But today I have the three spring scents limited edition spring scents to show you guys and I am loving one of these especially they all smell good but one of them especially which I will save for last but we have rainforest oasis if I were to describe how this smells I would say it smells both fresh and green <laughs> will give you a good idea of the scent on this one. We also have pink grapefruit and lime, which as I'm sure y'all can imagine is super citrusy and also a little bit sweet, which I love a sweet scent. I like sweet scents and scents that contain amber are my favorites. But one of my favorite scents when it comes to sweet smells, when it comes to fruits is melon. Melon and grape are it for me, which is why my favorite of the three limited edition scents is the elderflower and watermelon spritz, which it smells kind of like a cocktail. I'm not gonna lie, it smells like a gin cocktail, but the watermelon is definitely coming through with like a little bit of a green note making it more fresh, I would say, than sweet. So if you're looking to try it wild for yourself, if you wanna make a change that is both great for the environment and potentially also really great for your body, then you can head to the link down in my description box and use my discount code BOOKSAPRIL, which is going to get you a whole 20% off the entire wild range. So that's deodorant, shower gel, lip balm, whatever it is that you wanna try, and also your first subscription for the next 48 hours only. So please go ahead, take me up on that offer, become a wild convert, <laughs> like me and of course a big thank you to wild for sponsoring this video so i we got a lot we got a lot so i have some rep packages as always and a whole bunch of stuff that i bought for myself so getting into the usual suspects i'm gonna have to dismantle this stack and i don't want to do it for my rep packages we of course have the ya and the adult fairy loots. These were both sent to me by the team over at Fairy Loot to show to you guys. So thank you so much to Fairy Loot for that. These are both UK based monthly subscriptions. You have the book only adult box, which is a brand new hardback release in an exclusive edition. And you have the YA box, which is the same, but obviously young adult with a selection of bookish goodies as well. We have the monthly Illumicrate. This one is of course the March one. They are also a UK based subscription box company with a brand new hardback release in an exclusive edition. Edition. They tend to skew a little new adult, but they do have a mix of everything between like young adult and adult. And you do also get a selection of bookish goodies in here as well. So if you guys would like to get your hands on an Illumicrate after watching this video, you can use my discount code, which is Becca5, and that will get you a discount on a three or six month subscription. So aside from the rep packages, we have one more monthly subscription box, which is the Locked Library. So this one is a subscription from HarperCollins. It's both Harper Voyager and Magpie 
Y, which is the adult and YA fantasy imprints from HarperCollins. Once again, you get a brand new hardback in an exclusive edition. I have been skipping this a lot and this one I've picked up especially, the reason I was interested in it is because it's a Raylo fanfic, okay? And I know I complain about them all the time. I still don't understand the hype, but all of the Raylo fanfic I've read with one exception, I've really loved. So I had to pick it up. I am not sure about the majority of the extra stuff we've got, if I'm being honest. One of these is from Afterlight, which is Illumicrate's romance branch. I also have a special edition from Illumicrate. I think it's a sequel to a book I haven't read, but we'll find out together. I have the two things that I've ordered for my friend from Fairy Loot, which I think are the Fairy Loot editions of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. I'm really excited to see the fan art in that because I do like Fourth Wing, but just not enough to pick up another special edition of it, which is why I didn't get those for myself. I have, oh, oh, I remember. I remember what that Illumicrate parcel is now because I have two more editions of Empire of the Damned by G. Kristoff as well. I have the Forbidden Planet, which if you remember from the last unboxing, I couldn't remember if I actually ordered. I did, <laughs> it's here and I have the Illumicrate edition as well. Slightly regretting having four editions at this point, but it's already done. And I do really like the series, if I'm being honest. It's just, I've mentioned this in a vlog recently. Since I have started like running out of space dramatically, I don't like owning all my books anymore, which is wild considering the size of this unboxing. But outside of this, I don't really buy very much anymore. And I also have a goal in place to read more books than I haul. And I am well on track for that. Even if after I've unboxed all of these, I'm still gonna be good. So I think I'm gonna start with the fourth wing and Iron Flame. There's something exciting about the fact that I don't actually have any intention of keeping these. I've just opened Iron Flame. So we'll go with fourth wing first. If y'all are unaware of what this is, how is all I have to ask? Whoa. This isn't, what? That's not Fourth Wing. I am so confused. So this book is actually mine and it is not Fourth Wing as I anticipated. So back to what I thought I was opening, we will go with Iron Flame by Rebecca Eros. So this one is the second book in the series. I think it's called the Imperium Trilogy. I did give book one five stars. I haven't read book two yet, but it's the kind of five star you give in the moment where like, I just had a really good time with it. I really enjoyed it. In hindsight, it is probably a four, but it is about a girl who is supposed to be entering this war college in the scribe branch, but her mother, who is like the leader of the dragon riders, makes her join the dragon riding quadrant. And this is very dangerous for her because she actually has a a chronic illness and she doesn't think that she can stand up to the like rigorous physical testing that you have to pass through this college. And this branch of the college as well comes with an especially large risk because if you fail any of the challenges, then there is a very big potential that you are going to die. So the Fairy Loot Edition has the standard cover. We have custom end pages, which are pretty. They are the same on both sides. Ooh, we have a reverse dust jacket on here. That is really nice, actually. Am I having regrets not ordering these for myself? Yes. Is it too late to go back and keep these for myself? Also, yes. But I also really, really love the foiling on here. And we also have the sprayed edge. It's just, I also already have the Waterstones editions and the US first edition of Fourth Wing. And I don't think, I'm keeping the first edition that I got from the US because I picked it up in New York last year as like my souvenir book. But aside from having two copies of Fourth Wing, it's just not a series that I need to have two editions of. So my other Fairy Loot special edition that I've ordered that I thought was the Fourth Wing is not. I have just checked the Fourth Wing reprint because I ordered it in the second batch is shipping either this month or next month. So it might be next month's unboxing. But the one that I assumed was fourth wing, very wrongly, was the Atlas Complex by Olivia Blake. So this one is the third book in the Atlas series, the first book being the Atlas Six. I have not read the Atlas Paradox yet, but I do have the Fairy Loot editions of both of the first two books. So I picked up the one of the final book as well. This one is oh, so pretty. It is a dark academia story about six very gifted magicians that are approached by a mysterious guy called Atlas Bleakley. He tells them that they have been accepted into the Alexandrian Society, which is a secret society of magicians. So they take him at his word, but when they arrive there, they find out that actually only five of them are going to make it through into the society. So they expect to have some sort of competition or series of trials to figure out who's gonna make it into the society, but they're kind of left to their own devices for a year 
are just waiting for the outcome of who's going to make it and who isn't. So the fairy loot editions of these are very pretty. There's like an alternate cover color. I'll put the original over the top so that you guys can see. I love the sprayed edges on these. I think they're so pretty. And I also really love the purple of this, which is one of my favorite colors. We have foiled cover and foiled spine and end pages that have our main cast of characters on. So while we're rolling with the fairy loom, one of these is my, one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I think it's the YA one, which means that I can't remember what the adult is. So we're gonna go with the YA. Once again, big thank you to Fairy Loom for sending me the adult and the YA Fairy Loom to open for you guys. Ooh, that is hella colorful. Oh, oh, it's the book sleeve. I nearly said pouch, which I mean, same difference. I'm gonna like dig through here. There's lots of interestingly shaped objects in this one, but I just wanna find the spoiler card, which is right on the bottom. Is that it? Yeah. So this is the theme art. And this month the theme is heists and hustles. Here are the spoilers in case you guys would like to pause and take a look at them. I will be going in blind. So the first thing, the book pouch, is looks like it's inspired by the book of the month, which is a Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. I really like We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I have still yet to read We Free the Stars. I am hoping to get to it this year though, <laughs> fingers crossed. I really like the colors of this, like they're very bright, but they work very well together. The quote on the front of this says, Vengeance Never Dies, A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. I really like these zip pouches from Fairy Loop because I tend to put books that I'm annotating in the zip ones so that I can put my supplies in as well. But I also really like that you could fit a Kindle in here. So if you're traveling and you want a book and a Kindle, they can all fit together in one pouch. Next up, we have a Ray Bearer soap dish. You know what? I use liquid hand soap and I have wanted to change to bar soap. One, because it's sustainable. It's better for the environment because it doesn't have any packaging. There's no plastic. But also I really like the Lush soap bars. They just look so nice. So I have needed a pretty soap dish and this truly is a pretty soap dish. Look at that. It does have the drainage holes in it, which is great. And this would, it's too big to fit on my sink, but it would fit on my window ledge because I'm blessed to have like a wide one right behind the sink. Love that. Mm. What is this tin? Is it a tea tin? It's a big tea tin for the big tea. This one is inspired by Stephanie Garber, the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. I've got condensation on it from my vanilla coat, but the front of it says, never fall in love with the fate. And it has a really pretty design around it. I get tea from Burton Blend, so I'm always happy to have a tea tin. I do use one for um, my sweetener as well that I use. I just want to see if I'm right. Yeah, it is a tea tin. Of course it is. It's just a different shape to the ones that they normally do, which is why I wanted to check. We also have this, which is weirdly squishy. These look like they're inspired by Legends and Lattes. Wait, are these for Crocs? Are these Croc charms? Are you sending me croc charms fairy loot who do you think i am do i look like somebody who wears crocs that being said i always i always always yeah they are definitely definitely croc charms inspired by legends and lattes by travis baldry so i always always say crocs are one of the most like biggest abominations in the shoe industry and literally last night i said to curtis i kind of want some crocs because they're growing on me you know you see them so much they kind of start to make you think they're cute so maybe in the future i'll get some crocs i'm mainly thinking for like in the back garden walking brie looking casual but chic you know so we'll see if that manifests because it is my birthday coming up so maybe curtis will actually get me some crocs i don't want to be that person though and i am the kind of person who will not get crocs even though i want them because i said that i didn't want them but we have a sword replica this and oh it's one of of course the fairy loot sword replicas are letter openers which i love because then i can use them to open my boxes but this one is inspired by the hobbit now we can get to the book which i have to say it's the thing i'm most excited about oh wait a minute wait a minute i don't know why i'm in such a good mood today either guys we have the two tarot cards in every fairy loot box you get two tarot cards and then eventually you'll end up with like a full deck of tarot so this month we have the king and queen of moons and these are inspired by the gilded walls by rashani chokshi so a tempest of tea by hafsa Faisal. i am excited to see this it's orange and like pink which is intriguing but we also in here have the monthly fairy scoop next month's theme is dark domains which sounds exciting we also have the bookmark with the 
theme art on. And the book is, of course, A Tempest of Tea. So this is a completely unique cover, so I will overlay the original over the top. And I gotta say, I do like this one a lot more. The other one is pretty, but it has like a person on it. I think this is more the kind of style that I typically love. I also really love like the burgundy and mauve pinks and corals on here. I think that that's super stunning as a color palette. It has like a little illustration on the back. We have very pretty end papers with character art on. This is a really stunning addition. I am obsessed. And then I think that the one on the back is slightly different. I think that this one is like a six of crows kind of high story with vampires it's also foiled under the dust jacket a stunning sprayed edge in keeping with the cover we also have a bound in letter from the author in this one and also the inside flaps of the dust jacket are illustrated and foiled as well this one this very very pretty edition <laughs> does not have a synopsis on it so i'm just gonna have to look it up i think it's about a girl who runs a tea shop and then at night time, it's like a meet and pay place for um, like supernatural creatures. The series is called Blood and Tea. So I think I am correct. Yeah, so she is a master, a criminal mastermind and a collector of secrets and her tea room transforms into an illegal blood house by dark, catering to the vampires feared by society. And when her establishment is threatened, she has to gather a group of people together to perform a task, which I think is where like the Six of Crows heist element comes in. So I'm very, very excited to get to this one. I wanna do like a upcoming, not an upcoming, an anticipated releases vlog at some point. It's just, I've been struggling to kind of fit in my schedule alongside Shelve It or Scrap It and also my just like general TBR, but I am super excited to get to this one. And my favorite item in this box is actually quite hard because I do really like the book sleeve. Also really love the soap dish. So one of these two. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite item from this month box is. And then for the adult fairy loo, I truly cannot remember what this is, but I do look up spoilers now, which is how I skip, which I haven't talked about my skips. I'll talk about them at some point, I guess. But the adult one, the theme is Swan Lake. It's still not ringing a bell. I've heard good things about the addition of this one though. So that's exciting. Very pretty stenciled not stenciled laser printed edges this one is by lyra celine i don't know what this is guys this one is a feather so black by lyra celine i feel like this is a completely custom cover but i need to look it up it is indeed the actual the normal cover i don't know if it's the us or the uk one but the one that i'm gonna put on the screen is really pretty the other cover for this which i suspect might be the uk one is no is the pretty one that's the uk cover okay so the original cover of this is really pretty but this one is a complete redesigned one i really like the art style on the cover love the colors like the purple green blue gradient i think is really nice oh and i love that that color theme carries through to the end paper art so we have like a real consistency among the design elements oh it is also a foiled hardback on top of like a marbly printed one and then we also have on the inside of the dust jacket a more purpley variant of the original cover i do actually really like that recently fairy loot have been offering completely redesigned covers with a color variant of the original cover on the inside especially because a lot of the books they've been doing have very nice covers to start off with at the minute so <laughs> I feel like I have established that I know nothing about this. But the synopsis says, A Feather So Black is a sizzling fantasy romance set in a world of perilous magic and moonlit forests, spinning a seductive tale of a changeling princess, her cursed sister, and the dangerous fey lord she must defeat to save her family. <laughs> I love a fey lord, let's be real. In a kingdom where magic has been lost, Fire is a rare changeling. She was left behind by the wicked fair folk when they stole the High Queen's daughter, Ayla. When a hidden gate to the world of the fey folk is discovered, Fire is tasked by the High Queen to retrieve Ayla. I seem to be really unsure about her name and break her curse, but she doesn't go alone. With her is Prince Rogan, Ayla's betrothed and Fire's, have I said her name different every time? Childhood best friend. I gotta say it is kind of sus that the main character's name is similar to Feyre and the love interest is similar to Rowan. Like that is, it's ringing some alarm bells. But it says, as the two journey into a world where magic winds through the roots of the trees and beauty can be a deadly illusion, Fire's mission is complicated by her feelings for the prince and her unexpected attraction to the dark-hearted fey lord holding Ayla 
captive. Arian might be more monster than man, but he seems to understand fire in a way that no one ever has. I mean, it has all the elements of something that I'm gonna eat up, so it sounds good. <laughs> Let's hope that the execution is there as well. Before we get into the Illumicrate, we will go for the Forbidden Planet edition of Empire of the Damned, because that will be a nice segue into the Illumicrate edition, which is the one that I like the most. But this one, I think, is the blue one. Is it the House Box edition? But I really, really want to read it. Empire of the Damned. I think I'm gonna need to make that a priority sometime soon because I'm hyped. I will put the original cover over the top. Actually, I won't. You know what I will do? I will hold up the original cover. This one's the Waterstones edition so that you guys can see the difference. So on the original edition, you have this foiling and then on the Forbidden Planet, oh, we have a new one. We've got House Essen this time. So you get the card as well. I have a card with Empire of the Vampire, but the foiling under the dust jacket in this one is the same. And as y'all can see, it is just a blue variant of the original. I'm a sucker for a I wish that Jay Kristoff was this hyped when Nevernight was being released because I would 100% have 95 editions of Nevernight, which is one of my favorite series of all time. Empire of the Damned, I'll tell you all about it while I unbox the Illumicrate edition. It is the sequel to Empire of the Vampire, which is an adult fantasy following a guy called Gabriel, who is the last Silver Saint. Now the Silver Saints are vampire hunters and he has actually been captured by the vampires and they want him to tell them his life story to preserve for ages to come as he is now the last of the Silver Saints. So he does tell them his life story. So we have his youth and like how he became a Silver Saint. We have a story that's like quite a few years later on where he is trying to find the holy grail which is a precious artifact and then we also have the present day where he is telling his story to this vampire before he is executed so my favorite of the editions is the Illumicrate one, which as you can see, it's stunning. And when it comes down to it, if I'm only keeping a couple of editions of this, I'll be keeping the Waterstones ones as my reading copies and the Illumicrate ones as my special copies because they are just stunning. I mean, look at the edge on that. It's gorgeous. It's also signed. And we have House Divock on the cover of this. So this one does have an alternate sigil. And on the back, it says, Deeds Not Words. So that completes my Empire of the Damned collection. This is just a lot, man. I need chill. I mean, I do chill normally. I don't tend to have multiple editions of things unless it's Jay Kristoff, Sarah J Maas or Pierce Brown and then I am not responsible for my actions. So while we're in Hollow Crate, we will do the Afterlight. Another anticipated vampiric release from me because this one is by another one of my favorite authors. Not favorite enough to have multiple editions though, just fancy editions of this one. Because this one, is this vampiric? I think it contains wolves, but it does also contain vampires, right? Bride by Aldi Hazelwood. Is there vampires in this? I guess we'll find out together. A lot of these, if you're wondering why I don't know too much about them when I'm saying they're anticipated, is because I'm buying them off the author's name, not the actual contents of the book. But I think that this is, a pretty oh shit i just realized that i need to order ali hazelwood's newest like contemporary release in the illumicrate edition before they close the open pre-order but this one i'm pretty sure is the standard cover but we have a really nice printed edge on this i really like the like neutrality of it we have custom end pages which are indeed different on each side and we also have my favorite thing about this this looks like the nevermore covers it is a printed hardcover so is it a fact yes it does contain vampires it's not just wolves which is good because wolves really do give me the ick i mean i'm still over vampires since the last time they were really popular but wolves do also give me the ick so this one says misery lark the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the southwest is an outcast again her days of living in anonymity among the humans are over she has been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies the wares and sees little choice but to surrender herself in the exchange again. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha, Low Morland, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolute authority, but not without justice. And unlike the Vampire Council, not without feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was. Because Misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience. Reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she is willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers, even if it means a life alone in wear territory, alone with the wolf. This contains Notting, which I read for the first time a couple of months ago and I did not love. So we'll see. <laughs> 
how this one works out for me but I mean if anyone can get me to like a paranormal romance including Notting then it's Ali Hazelwood. <laughs> While we're talking about Afterlight actually because that was an Afterlight edition I skipped my March Afterlight. I cannot remember what it was right now and I cannot remember why. I just wasn't particularly interested in it which I don't think I'm going to be getting the most Afterlight editions at this point. I think I'm tempted by the May one but I do want to look into that one a little bit more and decide for sure but I just need to at the minute y'all can tell I'm in maintenance mode trying to get down my TBR and I'm only bringing in the stuff that I actually really want. <laughs> So our penultimate box is the March Luma Crate. Thank you so much to Luma Crate once again for sending this one my way. I do not remember once again what this book is, but we'll find out together. Oh, I do, I do. This was a contender for my Our Fantasy Bingo TBR, which is the next video on my channel. So do subscribe if you're interested in that uh, because the theme is fantasy. I'm sure it's an author that I also have another book by that I haven't read yet. But here are the spoilers if you wanna pause and take a look. And ooh, the theme for April is magic versus science. But, getting into this box we have oh we have one of my favorite types of dust jacket oh this has a lot of um types of items that i really like i think so the first one is a plant pot it says underwater haven on it gotta be real some of my plants did not survive winter yes i am very upset about it so let's have a look at this one this one oh this would look amazing in this room with the colors i love next up we have what i'm going to assume is one of their ceramic pots i have all of these i use a lot of them for various things some of them have like prompts in for when i do certain types of videos mainly my month of subscription box reads because as you can tell that's something i definitely need to keep doing some have my patreon bookmarks in i have one that has like my lipsticks in that i keep down here to throw on when i'm filming but this one is obviously sea themed and it is a book of mythical sea creatures it says the kraken mermaids and leviathan this is the cover and the back says the tales from the deepest depths of the ocean this one i think i'm gonna put this in here my bedroom is nearly done so i'm gonna probably put a couple up there because i do have a lot in this room now i think i've got one in the living room but um with the color of that one i feel like that one's that's potentially gonna stay in here what we want am i gonna move excellent question <laughs> y'all ask me like i get a lot of questions about where i get these from these are dust jackets so they're essentially a book sleeve for hardbacks you put the ends of the book in here and it's essentially like replacing the cover i love to use these these are probably my most used type of sleeve the ones that you put books in i tend to only use if i'm going out or i'm traveling to protect my book and also keep it contained i guess but these ones i use all the time at home mainly for books like subscription box books because i don't want to ruin the dust jacket so i take that off but also so I don't want the oil on my hands to pull the foil in off the cover. So I put them in these to keep them protected but not damage the dust jacket. This one as well is inspired specifically by the adventures of Amina al Sarafi. And is the book the plant pot? Yes, the plant pot is inspired by the book of the month, which I hope that the book has the same color scheme as this. That would be like, oh, it doesn't, I can see it. <laughs> And then the final item we have in this month's box is kind of annoying because I've just ordered some of these. These are transparent sticky notes. So the point of these is that you can put them in your book and write on them instead of writing it in the book if you like to annotate and you can still see like the text through the sticky notes. So these will definitely come in handy. It's just a shame that I've literally, I think it was, it was when I was reading House of Flame and Shadow because I intended to annotate it, but then the book was so bad that I didn't want to. So I do have a full pack of those. I might do like a I unhold my paperback copy of Red Rising and I'm regretting it now because I want to reread and do like a full annotate so maybe for that or like if I ever reread The Hating Game which I've wanted to recently. So the book of the month I do actually like this color scheme it's like a purple and an orange it's very pretty but it's Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan yeah actually this color palette is stunning I really like it this does look like an exclusive cover I mean I think it's just a different colorway but I'll put the original cover over the top so that you guys can see and we have some quite eerie end paper art which is the same yeah, the same on both sides. All I know about this one is that it is set underwater because it was a contender for one of the more difficult prompts for our fantasy bingo. Oh, that is gorgeous. I love this and I especially love this art style. We do also have a real nice edge on here, a printed edge. And inside, I'm pretty sure 
I've seen that it's signed, but I'm pretty sure I've also seen, yeah, a letter from Eliza Chang. So I don't actually know anything about this apart from that it's set like for the majority of it underwater. So I'll read the synopsis. It says, welcome to Tiankawi, shining pearl of human civilization and a safe haven for those fleeing civil unrest. Or at least that's how it first appears. But in the semi-flooded city, humans are quite literally on top, peering down from shining towers and aerial walkways on the fathom folk, sirens, sea witches, kelpies, and kappas who live in the polluted waters below. For half siren Mira, promotion to captain of the border guard means an opportunity to help her downtrodden people. But if earning the trust and respect of her human colleagues wasn't hard enough, everything Mira has worked towards is put in jeopardy when Nami, a know-it-all water dragon, fathom folk royalty, is exiled to the city. When extremists sabotage the annual boat race, violence erupts, as does the clampdown on fathom folk rights. Both Nami and Mira must decide if the cost of change is worth paying or if Tiankawi should be left to drown. A debut fantasy inspired by East Asian mythology, so I don't own any books by this author. I feel like this cover looks almost identical to a book by a different author, and that's why I keep thinking I already own this one. But it says this debut fantasy inspired by East Asian, Asian mythology and ocean folk tales is perfect for fans of Jade City, The Bone Shard Daughter, and House of Earth and Blood. Um, the House of Earth and Blood comparison really got me there, even though I didn't love the second two books, y'all know House of Earth and Blood is actually my favorite book of all time. So our final box is the locked library for our little Raylo fanfic. I I admit I picked this up because it's Raylo fanfic, because like I said, with the exception of the Hurricane Wars, I've loved every Raylo fanfic or book inspired by Raylo fanfic. I just don't understand the legality of this because you're literally printing Adam Driver's face on two books. And this has a completely different cover, but I will show you guys the original. It literally, the reason why I knew I didn't even look at the synopsis, I just looked at the cover online and I was like, it's literally just Raylo, not even fanfic, it's just Raylo. I do actually like the Raylo cover a lot more than this one, if I'm being honest, but the book is damaged. So I'm going to email about that because we have a big old dent in it. But it is What Monstrous Cuts by Rosamund Hodge. It says her destiny was to kill him. He'll haunt her even in death. Here we can see the damage. It's got a big, big old dent in the hardcover that goes literally all the way through. Um, but we do have a printed edge on here, as well as, I don't know if these are custom, patterned end papers. It says seven girls they had sent and none ever returned. The eighth girl is me. Sounds like um, Annihilation by Jeff Van Der literally just in the synopsis, not anything else about it, just because that is about like the 14th expedition that they send into Area X. We have a bound letter from the author, and I know nothing about this aside from that it's Raylo, so I will read all the synopsis, which is quite short. It says, centuries ago, the heretic sorcerer Ruvan raised a deadly briar around Runikia's palace, casting the royal family into an enchanted sleep and silencing the kingdom's gods. Born with a miraculous gift, Leah's destiny is to kill Ruvan and weak the royals. But when she succeeds, she finds her duty is not yet complete, for now she must marry into the royal family and forge a pact with God or die. To make matters even worse, Ruven's spirit is haunting her. A rich and romantic reimagining for, of the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale, perfect for fans of these violent delights and the Shadow Queen. This is definitely Raylo fanfic, right? Because it doesn't say anything about Raylo in here, but that cover, you're not telling me that this isn't. Should I Google it? Like, how can it be anything other than Raylo fanfic? This is from Vulture and it says, YA fantasy author Rosamund Hodge promises her upcoming release, What Monstrous Gods, has Raylo vibes. So I'm not imagining it, even though the book says nothing about it. So, that is my unboxing for March. I nearly said September, which is not even slightly the right month. As usual, we'll do the bit that you all love. We will lift up this big old stack. This is not, is that, whoa, we're not in line here. These are all of the books that I have hauled <laughs> in March. They heavy guys, this is not easy. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think the prettiest edition is. I think for me it's Tempest of Tea. I think that is the star of the show this month, but I will do everyone's favorite part. Empire of the Damned is ruining it. Let me just lift it. Oh, you don't belong here, sweetie, <laughs> because that's actually really sad because everything else has a printed edge or like a stenciled edge on it. Here are the edges for today's books. I think my favorite edge, well, that's a hard one. It's either the Swan Lake 
book or the atlas complex what's that even called a feathers or black or the atlas complex but let me down la don't let me down guys don't let me down um let me know down in the comments what your guys is star of this unboxing is like what was your favorite thing that i had in this month's unboxing but aside from that guys i just want to extend another thank you to wild for sponsoring this video and do remember that if you'd like to check out wild for yourself you can head to the link down in my description box to get yourself 20 percent off anything from the wild range but aside from that please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head to my description you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as link to my bookish candle website the etsy for that and do 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns hidden under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no